Hello and welcome to the DIYK video training series. In this video, we'll be learning about the Glowforge Pro laser system, the proper use and the operation. In order to use the Glowforge Pro as a certified user, you must both watch this video and take a written test before you can come in and do a test cut for us live. The Glowforge is capable of cutting and etching through many diverse types of material. Common ones you'll hear are wood, acrylic, leather, stone, glass. It will not cut metal. It can do some marking on certain types of metal. Really, that's something you'll need to ask one of the experts here at DIY Cave. There are a lot of materials that you can source that are laser safe, and we'll be stocking quite a few of those here in our lobby. Everything from commonly available materials from our local community to proof grade materials purchased from Glowforge itself. Those proof grade materials have a special barcode on them that will program the laser for you for the proper settings, which is a really cool feature. In any case, any material that you wish to mark or engrave needs to be one half inch thick or less. Anything more than that in the Glowforge is not going to have a successful cut. The size of the work bed is 20 inches by 12 inches, but the actual cutting zone is about 19 by 11 inches. The focal length of the laser is about one half of an inch, which is also the maximum cutting depth that can be made in the optimum situation. The maximum thickness of the material that can fit into the work bay is two inches, but the cutting area remains the same at the top half inch. When properly focused, the kerf or width of the cut that the laser makes is eight thousandths of an inch. Because focus is so important, knowing the thickness of your material is critical. We use a set of calipers to measure the thickness in digital inches, not fractional, to enter that setting into the Glowforge software. Now it's time to start the laser. Follow this list. First, confirm that your material is not on the restricted list. Second, turn on the room venting system. Third, turn on the Glowforge and allow it to go through its several minutes startup. Do not open the lid until it is finished. Four, confirm your material thickness and write it down for reference. You can get a project started in two ways. The first is through tracing a design using the Glowforge camera. All images will be converted into simple black and white images, not grayscale. Place your design inside the Glowforge and close the lid firmly. In the Glowforge software, click the Trace feature. Follow the prompts at the top of the screen. Important key presses to remember are Control Z to undo, Control Arrow Up to lighten, and Control Arrow Down to darken. Click in contained areas to tell the software that it is an edge to be cut. Otherwise, all areas will be treated as engraves. The second way is the most common with the importing of a digital design file. SVG is the preferred format, but other formats such as some PDF files work as well. You can use software such as Inkscape to convert many files into the SVG format. Once the Glowforge is powered up and your design has been loaded or traced into the software, it is time to set up the laser job. Place your material into the Glowforge and use hold downs such as magnets if your material is lightweight or not flat. Center your work in the bed because that's where the camera will focus for project alignment. Close the lid firmly and wait for the software to display the image of your workspace. If you're using proof grade material, then the cut, engrave, score power and speed settings will be automatically applied. If you're using your own material, you'll need to consult the crowdsourced settings list or do your own tests. The three general operations are cut, score, and etch. Cuts should go all the way through a material, scores should go most of the way through but not show on the other side, and engraves will be dependent upon your preference. If you create some settings that work well for you, please add them to the crowdsource chart and or email them to glowforge at DIYcave.com. 
all settings are basically a combination of power and speed. Other settings, such as LPI, or lines per inch, allow you to control specific behaviors of the laser. In general, always go for the fastest speed possible to achieve the results that you want. Slower speeds equal faster heat buildup, which also equals potential fire hazards. You don't want to have to use that fire extinguisher if you don't have to. If you have any doubts, be sure to ask for help. Follow this list to create your settings. First, load or trace your design. Second, place your material into the Glowforge and use hold downs if necessary. Third, choose your material in the software. Proof grade from the list, uncertified material you must enter manually in thickness up to a half of an inch. You must enter the proper thickness before you adjust the design settings. Fourth, place the image on the workpiece in the preview window. Use the rotate handle to align your image, and remember that this is an approximate alignment. Leave about an eighth of an inch space outside of all edges. Fifth, choose your cut, etch, and score settings for each design element. Every different color in a design file will be treated as a different element. Now you're ready to go. Press the print button and the Glowforge will begin to crunch the numbers. When it is ready, it will show a preview of your job plus the job time. This is the time that you'll be charged for, so if you need to make any adjustments to your settings to reduce the time, this is your opportunity. The button on the Glowforge will begin to pulse slowly, indicating that it is ready to go. Before you push the button, Enter the job duration time into the Glowforge log. This will ensure that proper maintenance is performed and that the machine will be kept in working order. In addition, it will allow the proper billing for your projects. You must stay in the room with the Glowforge during the process. You may want to get some ear protection as it can be about 70 decibels during use. You'll need to watch for problems such as fire, extreme melting, mechanical impact, or poor alignment. When the job is done, the Glowforge will purge some final smoke and then power down the fan. After that, you may open the lid and remove your project. Please remove all scrap from the machine and place in the scrap bin, the trash, or take it home. Any material in the scrap bin is considered free to all users. Clean up any additional debris from your time in the tech room and turn off the venting system. Have a steward turn off the Glowforge and invoice you for your Glowforge time. And finally, show off your cool project by sending a picture to us at glowforge at DIYcave.com. Thanks for taking the time to watch this certification video for the Glowforge at DIY Cave. Remember, in order to complete your certification, you still need to complete a written test and do a proficiency test here at the shop. You can get more information by contacting one of the volunteers on hand. DIY Cave, think it, make it.